All right, Doombots, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna do some more Dragon Champions content. This time, we're gonna talk about Battlegrounds uh, because at this point, after you've gone through the first couple of uh, videos I went over, you're probably interested in finding out what this solo war-like mode is. So basically, if you've played Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, you're familiar with uh, Grand Arena Championships. It's very similar to that, very similar. We'll start off here. Battlegrounds is a, a uh, single player versus player PvP aspect. Basically, you have to defend points, your opponent has to defend points, and then you have to attack each other. It's built in multiple phases. Phase one, one is the registration phase where you get to see the person you're up against. I'm up against Mojo Jojo 98 If I click on him, I can get a little bit more information about where he's at around the time of the fight. Now, what's important to know is that whatever you register for the fight is pretty much where they're going to stay during the fight. So even if you make a character particularly stronger during it, if the uh, registration phase is over or if the defense placement phase is over, those characters really can't be updated unless you go back in and manually update the characters. What does that mean? We'll see. So basically, I can kind of track what this guy's doing. I could see what, what should I expect up to the beginning of the fight if I want to, and then I can plan accordingly, which is what I ended up doing. So again, there are four basic nodes. You can place a team to defend here and move on. It gets more difficult, obviously, the higher up in rankings, and I am very low in rankings, so it's very unlikely that I'm going to be facing off against people that are way stronger or way weaker than me. It's going to be a rough push. So as I said, there are four nodes, one, two, three, four, that I have to worry about, and four nodes that my opponent has to worry about. The uh, general rule of thumb is you place your best teams to defend, and then you get into a little bit of a different type of strategy from that point. So we'll use me, for example. I placed a team comprised of uh, characters I've worked on of different power levels in the first node. They all have titles. I don't remember them. <laughs> you, you should be able to see it over time. Uh, the second node, or the uh, second row, rather, I have a team that's comprised of also generally characters that I have a pretty decent investment in, uh, but aren't particularly uh, great working together. Uh, just strong guys, right? 28k worth of power. It took him two attacks to beat this team down. Uh, and you can kind of track that. Then we can move to the back row. Uh, I am of the mindset that you want to have your strongest teams in the back and not in the front. I'll go into why later. Uh, but uh, this would be a team that I actually curated and put together. This is a demon-human hybrid team uh, powered at 33.4k, sure, whatever. And uh, at the time, this was the power level of all the characters. If you want to check my roster after this, I'll go through it to show that I have invested in them, but that was all stuff that happened during the battleground, so they didn't see it during the fight. And it works the same on both sides, so it's not unfair to anybody. You just have everything to work during the phases. Uh, so this one I have set up over here. And then, of course, the fourth and final node uh, I have set up with my generic orcs demons hybrid team also a pretty strong team overall so that's how i place my defenses and uh, the way i designed it because this is the starting point right here you can attack any row you'd like but you can't attack any column so rows go across columns go down duh this is the top row this is the bottom row if i want to attack this node i have to beat this one if I want to attack this node, I have to beat this one. Simple, right? So going through what happened, he took uh, what I think most people are going to inherently do in Battlegrounds, which is put their strongest teams first, assuming that if they can beat the strongest team, uh, if they can't beat the strongest team, then you're going to get the points. That is a great assumption. If you look at your opponent and recognize that they are... Uh, significantly stronger than you or weaker than you, you can probably hold the back row with the same kind of strength. 
on the other side, when I looked at my opponent and realized he was a little bit weaker than me, I made the decision that, you know, if I put my weaker teams up front and give him those points, it's very unlikely that he's going to have enough strength of roster on the back side to take out my strongest teams in the back. Now, that worked for me here. It might work for me in the future. It might not. There's a lot of planning and little stuff here. Basically, what you need to know uh, is once you've placed it, you want to place a team anywhere. It doesn't matter how strong or weak they are. And you want to lead with your strongest teams. Uh, on the other side, whatever team you place on defense, whatever five character team you build and place there, that's their defense setup. That does not change. When you go to attack, as I'll show you here, uh, when you move into the attack phase, you can choose any character. So they are very separate. Your defense teams and your offense teams are comprised of the same roster. You don't lose one by placing it in the other. You don't lose a character that you can use if you place it on defense. So you really get to use your full roster on both sides. So Mojo, uh, thanks for being a part of this video, by the way, Mojo. Uh, he went ahead and placed his strong two teams in the front row, uh, which led me to use my strong teams to stop them. I had to use basically modified versions of the teams I placed on defense. This was mostly orcs, and then this one was mostly humans. And then I had enough power left on the back end to put together at least one more team of the guys who were left back. Then we checked to see his back row, and you'll notice that he kind of did the exact opposite as me. He placed a very strong defense uh, in front, and then behind it is a reasonably weaker defense. Now, the characters themselves might have some synergies. That's a different conversation for another time. But overall, his strategy was such that if he could stop me here, I wouldn't worry. Or I might use my strongest power here and then not have enough to beat uh, what he had left over. As it turns out, he was wrong. Uh, on the other side, my strategy was incredibly simple. I'd give him the opportunity to fight weaker teams up front, possibly allowing him to make a mistake and maybe overestimate the fight, maybe use a team stronger. Now, I can't necessarily see whom he used to beat the fight, unfortunately. I would love that content. Please add that to the game. But he saw a 28K team and a 17k team and I, he used teams but now we're at a situation where i have my two strongest teams in the back with no attacks on them most likely because he didn't necessarily have the juice in the tank to push through now this strategy worked for me a couple of times in battleground so far keep in mind i'm by no means an expert but it does seem to be beneficial especially in the early game when people's rosters aren't as wide. Now, that said, you may end up pairing yourself against somebody who is a uh, who outspends you dramatically and has a wider roster. That just goes to say, not everything is winnable. There is one piece of information I'd like to point out. So if you notice here, my total hero power is 163k. And if you notice here, Mojo's total hero power is 148k. Now, I don't know what if this is his hero power... Uh, as of right now, or when he jumped into the fight. I assume it is as of right now, just to throw it out there. But that is where his total roster power looks like. Uh, I was able to get a little bit stronger, but at the time when this started, even if you check, you'll notice that Snorri and, and Freezard are 64. One thing I do want to show, just for the sake of it, is where... Nope, sorry. My Mar is 5,500 power, but if we were to go to my roster real quick and see what I've done since that started, you'll notice that Mar has gotten just a little bit stronger. So at the time when we were paired, our powers were roughly the same. And that's kind of the biggest takeaway that I want everyone to know about this game mode. It pairs you within a reasonable, maybe 20% uh, power structure of your roster, which means you are penalized for having a wider roster uh, of like balanced characters versus a little bit of a taller roster 
or completed team roster. So that's something that you should keep in mind that when you're going into Battlegrounds, a player with a bunch of characters at 5k is probably not going to do as well as a player with half as many characters at 8k. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, so this isn't the be all end all strategy. And again, this is the earliest games Battlegrounds you're going to see. This is for the players who are joining now. When, when you unlock Battlegrounds, what do I do? In general, you don't have to worry too much about the first two nodes. Honestly, no matter where you place, you are very likely going to lose something in a Battlegrounds fight. Uh, whether it be your two strongest teams in front, your two strongest teams on the top row, that is completely and totally up to you. Um, you know, if you have balanced roster, you can probably just place teams based on their synergies. I can tell you firsthand that pandas uh, are really hard to beat on Battlegrounds defense. So if you have a full pandas team with, with Ember, go nuts. But ultimately, there's a lot of little tiny strategies for those starting the game now. When you enter Battlegrounds, I would recommend putting your strongest two teams in the back, putting your weakest two teams in the front. This way, it is very likely that you're going to at least come close to a tie and you will have a little bit more depth of roster to take out one or two additional characters at the end. Maybe not full clear the entire team, but probably have the opportunity to do so or at least kill a character. And that's what's going to be the difference when you get paid. Um, the rules of attacks and everything are available right here. But as you can see, you gain random points for random actions. I say random. It just means that certain things are worth it. Clearing an entire node is worth it. Clearing a character is worth it. Having characters left on defense with full health is worth points and that's what's going to be but let's be clear the best way to win a battlegrounds is to beat all of your opponent's nodes uh thank you mojo jojo for this fight and allowing me to do this it was a good fight uh hopefully next time uh you'll kick me in the butt and then we'll have a different fight uh other than that guys if you have any questions on battlegrounds let me know in the comments below uh i have a very limited knowledge of this game as it is right now my knowledge is from about a year ago Things have changed and I'm trying as fast as I can to gather as much, but this was a theory I had. It worked out. Let's see how it works in the next one. You can catch me on stream when that happens. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Sanjili and I will catch you later.